for my slides. Um, so it's a really interesting time in healthcare as we've been discussing. And we really have the opportunity to leverage the amazing acceleration of technologies to address many of the grand challenges across healthcare. Um, and clearly disruption is all around us. AI is certainly playing a role in that and its convergence with blockchain and new business models. We certainly had disruption this past year or so with the COVID virus. And COVID-19 actually has been a bit of a catalyst to move us from where we've been stuck in the third industrial age to really hopefully bring health and medicine to the fourth industrial age. I love this little cartoon. Who led the digital transformation of your company or of healthcare? The CEO, the CTO, or COVID-19. And, and COVID has, in a sense, just like Sputnik set off the space age, COVID is sparking a bit of a new health age and hopefully helping us in its silver lining reimagine and accelerate healthcare, just like we've accelerated new vaccines and new approaches to diagnostics. We're accelerating the future from thinking about the four walls of the traditional hospital to increasingly hospital at home or hospital to home spill, uh, or lab to laptop. But, you know, it's still 2021, and if you visit Mass General Hospital, where I trained in both internal medicine and pediatrics, or Stanford, we're still using fax machines, often paper forms. Um, I had a cardiac study done a few months ago. I could only get my results back on a CD-ROM. I don't even own a CD-ROM player anymore. We're still using public health measures from over 100 years ago. So with our new mindsets in AI and beyond, we have the opportunity to maybe get out of designing healthcare around body parts and leveraging our new omics and metabolomics and digital exhaust and unsiloing health and medicine to practice it differently than the ways it's been done for eons in the past. So speaking of the past, what we've really focused on, particularly in traditional Western medicine, is not healthcare, but sick care. What do I mean by sick care? Sick care is based on that very intermittent episodic data that which we usually collect only in the four walls of the hospital. And even if you are trying to get your blood sugar or your weight or your blood, or your blood pressure to your doctor, they often don't even want to see that information. So this intermittent episodic data leads to our very reactive mindset where we tend to wait for the patient to show up with a heart attack or a stroke or in my world of oncology with a late stage cancer or we wait for the pandemic to arrive on our shores. And we also are still stuck with a world of not precision medicine, but imprecision medicine, where many of the top selling drugs only work for about one in four to one in 24 of the patients that take them. So we have the opportunity to move from intermittent reactive sick care to one of much more continuous data that's used intelligently that we can use to be much more personalized, much more proactive and start to bring care arguably anytime, anywhere with better outcomes and lower costs to really democratize healthcare around the planet. Moving the needle, not just on treating disease, but thinking about precision wellness and optimizing our health span, not just living long lives, but optimizing the quality of our lives. So the focus on the future of medicine is, is here. I, I got to write the opening article for National Geographic about a year ago. And part of the takeaway is it's not about any one technology or innovation, but how these technologies are coming together. How many of these technologies are accelerating ex exponentially? We're all familiar with the exponentials of Moore's Law, which makes our supercomputers in our pocket far more powerful than a crazy supercomputer from the 1980s. You know, ARM processing chips are now billions of times more powerful. And we're now moving into quantum computing, which will have thousands of times the possibilities of what we have today. Uh, we'll be blending our data into our wearable glasses and contact lenses. And maybe soon, if Elon Musk and others have their way, we'll be implanting these devices in our brain, which certainly has ethical and other implications as to how we interact with our memory, our consciousness, uh, and beyond. So as we enter this new exponential age, things are becoming, of course, digitized, which means sometimes they're free, they're demonetized, they're dematerialized, they're appified. And we have the opportunity then to democratize some of this technology around the planet and reimagine healthcare across the continuum, not just where we are today, but in the next five and 10 years, which will make the last 10 years look slow. And to do this reimagination again, across the continuum of prevention, diagnostics, therapy, discovery, and globalization of our applications. So part of this, of course, rides now on our magical supercomputers. They're well beyond just for doing talks or telemedicine, they're becoming diagnostic devices to check your kid's ear for an ear infection or to leverage technology on your mobile watch, which now are becoming FDA cleared and can diagnose cardiac conditions uh, and beyond. And of course, these new devices, these internet of things are becoming internet of medical things, writing 5G, which is 100 times faster than 4G, and 6G is on its way. And these new medical technologies create massive amounts of data, whether it's your genome, your digitome, your medical records. Those data forms are often still siloed. They don't talk to each other. 
And our real opportunity, particularly using, as we're discussing AI and beyond, is not just to have data, no one wants raw data, but to make that actual information that we can intelligently use ourselves as patients or as clinicians at the bedside or at the website in our virtual models. And also to sift through this infodemic truly make sense of the information and not to spread the wrong information, a real huge challenge still in our pandemic age. So technology, of course, is one component, but the most important element of acceleration in terms of innovation is often our incentives, incentivating not just the sick care side, but prevention. And with our new business models, often we're doing now what's called value-based care, paying for prevention, paying for better outcomes, paying to bring care to our corner pharmacy or to our mobile device. And that gives us opportunity now to do what's often called mobile health, connected health, or, or digital health. I think we'll just soon call it health. But it gives us a chance now to connect data, sift it, and make it actionable to the individual or the public health system or to a hospital system or beyond. And digital is not a panacea. It's what can layer and integrate now forms of AI, big data, machine learning, artificial uh, 3D printing, blockchain, to converge, super converge, as technology gets faster, cheaper, and better, to give us that chance to reimagine medicine and to address the grand challenges we have around the planet from aging populations to managing the data to challenges in how we regulate and pay for uh, technologies as well. This past year, I've been sharing the XPRIZE Pandemic Alliance Task Force. What's been amazing as part of the silver lining of the pandemic is to bring diverse folks together from industry from NGOs, from startups to uh, Fortune 50 companies to, to solve for PPE and new forms of testing and the, the, the infodemic and mental health challenges as well. And also to recognize that it's often not uh, the technology piece, but it's our social elements, our social determinants that play such a critical role. And we've seen the challenges and disparities in terms of outcomes and mortality and morbidity in, in this pandemic series. So we need to open up the, the layers, thinking about not just the Maslow's hierarchy, but do you have a digital device? Do you have digital determinants of health? Was that access to internet? And only about half the planet now has access to internet. That's gonna come to soon 100% with technologies like Starlink from SpaceX, bringing it not just to rural America, to, but to rural Africa and beyond. So given this convergence, we can reimagine healthcare. People are trying to Uberize how we get our drugs to how we get our uh, care delivered. We're seeing the big players like Amazon, Facebook, Google all get into healthcare. And it's not science fiction. Soon we'll be having drones delivering our drugs and medications. Um, and that's a challenge for big pharma and old players. Pharmageddon is on its way. We're seeing non-surgical or medical approaches, things like MRI-focused ultrasound that can sometimes cure diseases like a Parkinsonian tremor or do non-surgical surgery with the leveraging of a focused ultrasound. So let's take a step back and look at three areas that these technologies can impact, hopefully in an intelligent form going forward. Let's start with health and prevention. You know, it's our bad behaviors that often lead to most of our chronic disease and costs. And we're only about, what, 12 years since the first Fitbit launched? I'm now wearing you know, literally four different devices on me right now that can track my physiology, my behavior. And many of you are wearing them too. They're consumer devices in most cases. But where things are shifting is the ability to take even simple small data from a non-FDA device like a, a Fitbit and understand when a patient's gone home after a COVID hospitalization or maybe a total hip replacement, are they walking more or are they walking less? Small data can be useful. And where I think this is gonna take us very quickly is from our era of quantified self, where the data is solid on our devices, to one of quantified health, where it's gonna to flow to your caregiver or to your AI agent in the cloud, which will be constantly monitoring your digital exhaust to uh, find and optimize your wellness, to diagnose a disease at stage zero, and to treat it in a much more feedback loop driven way. And we have a lot of new digital measurement tools. Blood pressure now can be measured seamlessly through sort of radar devices. We're seeing devices that can come out and measure blood sugar and blood pressure from a, a watch-based type band. We're seeing incitables, technologies that can go underneath our skin and transmit data 24-7. Uh, so a whole new ways of collecting and sifting through information in, uh, in powerful ways. And of course, our shockables, our hearables, our ringables are gonna be collecting increasingly massive amounts of information and giving us insights, just like my aura ring can give me insights into sleep. And sleep, if you do nothing else, try to track your sleep through some form of app or device. We understand now how important sleep is to optimizing health and wellness and preventing diseases or treating a disease if you have it. We can also start to quantify all sorts of other things. Breath is a biomarker uh, to pick up signs of everything from COVID to cancer. 
our wearable clothes can start to pick up uh, uh, signs of a problem if you're a diabetic patient. Underwearables, I'm wearing them now, I won't show them to you. Little packs of these devices, little sensors in your underwear band can measure your stress, help you with your meditation, but now with new reimbursement models can help us uh, uh, do a better form of tracking patients with respiratory issues. Or shakables for a patient who might have a tremor can now be tracked from an Apple Watch. And technologies like the Cala Health device are consumer wearables, basically using electricity as medicine. Instead of being a deep brain, uh, in, a deep brain stimulator inside your brain, a wearable device can sort of reverse the tremor in many patients as a form of electric, electricity as medicine. So we're really opening the, the, the pivot uh, into new forms of thinking uh, for therapeutics in this digital electrical age. Other sorts of wearables can enable someone who's paralyzed to walk. Uh, that's going to be embedded in our clothes. We're seeing wearables that are blending into jet suits to help rescue folks. If you're a paramedic, I got to try flying one of these jet suits a little harder than it looks. Uh, um, and also, clarification, we're starting to understand that food and medicine is critical. We can start to measure our inputs, our outputs, and now with uh, glucose monitors, uh, start to understand how our physiology behaves with different sorts of meals, whether you're diabetic or not. So we're going to really start to move and leverage our microbiome, our genome, our metabolome into an age of personalized nutrition. We're also in an age of invisibles. Our cameras with AI and machine learning can pick up our vital signs seamlessly. So we're going to start to be collecting our data, our mental states from our facial expressions. We can use voice as a biomarker to detect mental health issues, uh, to detect even signs of COVID or uh, other cardiac issues. Our speakers can start to listen to us. Our Wi-Fi can start to pick up our vital signs. So we're entering a time, whether we like it or not, where our digital exhaust can be collected. Uh, and what do we do with it? How do we integrate that into our workflow of clinicians who are already overwhelmed with data? How do we sift through that as we move forward to understand how we use that in the real clinical context? Project Baseline from Google or the All of Us trial from the NIH is starting to map this digital exhaust. So we can sort of start to build what I like to call predictalytics. Imagine we all have our own personal FICO score for our health, or our own personal check engine light that integrates the data and makes it useful for all of us, tuned to each of us. And that's starting to happen, check engine lights for health, uh, including using our wearable data to determine who might um, have a problem uh, with COVID before they even know it, and predict who we might want to shake hands with or, or just give the elbow bump to uh, as we walk into a room. Deepak's fine. Now, of course, all this data is overwhelming. We, know, we already know we're supposed to exercise more and eat less. So we're starting to see digital avatars, we'll hear more about those later today, that can help us interact with our health information and hopefully uh, encourage us to be nudged in the right direction. That's not one size fits all, however. We need to really personalize these interfaces as we move forward. Voice can play a role. We might have a voice interface showing us in the mirror you of today, but increasingly we'll start to understand you of tomorrow, and that can help us nudge going forward. And that means augmented and virtual reality will increasingly be part of our, our care from helping surgeons see through the body of a patient and do smarter interventions to using virtual reality, not, as, not just for video games, but even for helping pain patients uh, as we go forward. So I'm running out of time here. Uh, I'm going to switch to what's possible in the digital diagnostic space. We have a whole new set of digital tools. These are some from my desk at home ways we can inter integrate those with telemedicine, smart stethoscopes embedded with AI machine learning that's going to, to listen to our lungs and give us diagnostics, smart ultrasounds that can bring us uh, a diagnostic power uh, anywhere around the world, uh, AI-powered patches, which will give us uh, the power of an intensive care unit anywhere on the planet, or laboratories that can increasingly be built into our smart devices and bring the power of a, a smart lab anywhere, or the power of a diagnostic just from your smartphone camera can take a picture of your urine dipstick and make the analysis and send it to your doctor and nurse and bring your medication by drone. We uh, ran a $6 million X prize for rapid, fast, frequent, cheap, fast, frequent, cheap and easy uh, COVID testing. Many of the winners of that X prize will not just be used for COVID, but to do diagnostics across the healthcare continuum going forward. Now, a big challenge as we've been talking about is we need to connect the dots. Artificial intelligence is a simple thing to say. I like to think of more of it as in, uh, AI, not AI, but IA, intelligence augmentation, to enable our ability to make sense of new forms of dermatology, or AI meets radiology, or pathology, or even AI-empowered gastroenterology. All these things are coming together now and are going to really help uh, enhance and upskill almost any clinician 
information to bring care anytime, anywhere, and sift through massive amounts of data, might be in a hospital or outside of a hospital, to predict who might be getting sepsis or have a fall or any other complication before they have it. So as we move into this rapid age, we have the opportunity not just to do telemedicine, but to think about prescribing digital pseudicals, apps, for example. I've just launched a, a new platform called Digital.Health, which is where clinicians can start to find the digital health tools that they might want to prescribe and match their patients' needs going forward. So check out digital.health if you'd like to find uh, a database of useful digital health tools uh, in, your, uh, in our pockets uh, today. So in conclusion, I think the future of healthcare and medicine is bright, particularly through the leverage of crowdsourcing data, applying the lens of AI machine learning that, that to build us our own sort of Google Maps so we can all think about ourselves not just as organ donors or data donors, but as, as blood donors, but as data donors going forward and build sort of these health ways, like we can share our driving information, share health information moving forward. Companies like StuffThatWorks.Health are doing exactly that and allowing each of us to share our data and learn from other patients like us going forward. So think about the future of health, medicine, AI, not just as any one technology, but the convergence of technologies. It's an exciting time. Time. The puck is moving quickly. For all of us out there looking to rebuild and reshape the future of medicine, it's really an exciting time. COVID has been a positive catalyst. We're starting to take not just linear steps, but exponential ones. And we all have the opportunity not just to predict the future of health and medicine, but to build a better, brighter one for all of us on Spaceship Earth. Thanks for your time.